welcome back to the Balanced Blonde Podcast, Soul on Fire. We have some very exciting things happening here around the Balanced Blonde community right now. As if you follow me on Instagram or if you listen to this podcast frequently, then you might know that I'm in the process of finishing creating a course called Waking Back Up to Your Own Soul that has been channeling through me for about a year, but I finally sat down and started recording for the course about two and a half weeks ago, and everything has come together really fast. I feel very, very lucky and grateful to have an incredible team around me to support me in this launch happening very soon because, of course, I created it. I'm over the moon excited to get this course out to you guys. It's launching really soon. We're still firming up the exact date, so we'll let you know really soon. It's a nine-week course to waking back up to your own soul, learning so many different practices of channeling, and waking back up to your body, falling in love with your body, healing ancestral trauma, learning how to manifest, learning how to use the law of attraction effectively, learning how to use your intuition and automatic right to talk to your angels and your spirit guides and your team of light beings on the other side. So many different incredible things based off of my experiences on plant medicine based off of the Kabbalah, something that I've drawn a lot of inspiration and wisdom from, based off of so many different spiritual teachers that have been on this podcast and many books that I've read, and basically just my own journey with manifesting the life of my dreams and healing my body and waking back up to my own soul. So, Super excited. You can head to my website, thebalanceblonde.com. Click on courses on the top to learn more. You can also just directly email jane at thebalanceblonde.com to get on the list to learn more. So many different incredible and exciting things happening with that. Launching very soon. And I don't think I've ever been more excited about just about anything. So just so happy to bring it to you guys and so ready. So with that, we have today's beautiful guest, the lovely Ashley Wood. She's an Akashic Records reader. She lives in Canada, but she was visiting Los Angeles and we finally made this conversation happen because we have had so many interactions together. We've been communicating back and forth on Instagram and social media for a really long time. Ashley has her own podcast called Manifest This, and she reads people's Akashic records. And we talk all about what the Akashic records are in this episode. I won't even try to explain it because Ashley does a much better job. Just yet another tool that we can use to live from a heart-centered place return to our souls and relearn who we are in a cosmic sense. So I was so happy to have this conversation with her. She also channeled for me. She did an Akashic Akashic Records reading for me here in this episode. So you guys will hear that. And I feel like she just has so much to teach us and so much wisdom to share with us. So I look forward to you guys listening to this episode. If you love it, leave a rating and review on iTunes. Send me a screenshot to jordan at thebalancebond.com so I can send you my Soul on Fire yoga ebook as a thank you. 200 pages of amazingness just to thank you for rating and reviewing the show and subscribing and send me a, sending me a screenshot to jordan at thebalancebond.com. We also have our Soul on Fire podcast tribe on Facebook where you can join, meet friends from all over the world and keep the conversation going. Lastly, before we dive into this episode with Ashley, I want to thank our sponsor for today's episode, The Incredible Four Sigmatic. You guys, Four Sigmatic is coming out with so many new products. I can hardly even keep up with them and I've been with them since day one. I watch all the new products that they launch. I feel so proud of them. If you want to learn all about Four Sigmatic and medicinal mushrooms and adaptogens, listen to the episode of this podcast with Taro, the founder of Four Sigmatic. 
He teaches us so much about the magic of medicinal mushrooms. Mushroom coffee does not taste like mushrooms. Just in case you were wondering, it literally tastes like coffee. They also have so many different blends. Before I get into the blends, I just want you to know that you can use the code BLONDE at checkout for 15% off of anything and everything for Sigmatic. You can also go to foursigmatic.com slash blonde to see all of my favorites and shop all my favorites. I have so many favorites from the Four Sigmatic Chaga to their mushroom hot cacao to their beauty blends. They have so many incredible beauty blends now. They have skincare. They have adaptogenic serums that you can put right onto your face. I've been really, really into the serums and face oils lately. I feel like my skin has never looked better. They have incredible stuff. They have four sigmatic tumblers for those of us looking to reduce our use of plastic. I bring that four sigmatic tumbler everywhere. They even have superfood protein that I love the ingredients. The ingredients are super clean. I've been using it pretty much every day. It's mostly made of pea protein, hemp protein, chia, pumpkin, coconut, and then it's full of superfoods like ashwagandha, cordyceps, lion's mane, reishi, turkey tail, chaga, and eleuthero. Eleuthero I particularly love because there's a lot of scientific backing that shows that people suffering from Lyme disease like myself can benefit from the anti-inflammatory benefits of Eleuthero. So I love all the adaptogens in Four Sigmatic because plants know how to adapt to their surroundings. So when we take these plants, when we ingest these plants from drinking them or eating them, they help us adapt to our environment and they help us adapt to whatever it is that we're going through, whether it be chronic disease or inflammation or stomach issues or chronic fatigue, so many different things. So check out foursigmatic.com, use the code BLONDE, shop around. My favorites are just the standard mushroom coffee, the chaga, the beauty blends, and I love their mushroom hot cacao because it tastes like chocolate. So check all that out. Enjoy, fall in love, and can't wait to share the magic with you guys. Now let's head into this episode with Ashley Wood. All right, Ashley, you're here. I'm I'm, so happy. I'm so happy to be here. After so long of chatting back and forth on social media for years, I feel we've been in contact and now you're here mm-hmm. and you're potentially moving to LA. Yeah. Which is so exciting. It's been in the manifestation for like a year now, but longer than that because when I was, when I first came to California, I was 15, 15, I think. And I said, I'm going to live here one day. And it's always been in me. I mean, right. In astrogeography, this is my Neptune line, so mm. I'm really dreamy here. <laughs> Did you do that with Dara? Yeah. She's the best. Yeah. Neptune's amazing. So you channel the Akashic Records mm-hmm. and also the Pinnacle, right? Yes. I was seeing that on your yes. Instagram. So for everybody listening who's not familiar with the Akashic Records, let's start there Sounds and then good. head into also the others that you channel. Sounds good. Well, the pinnacle are the energies I work with in the Akashic Records. Oh, so, got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Akashic Records are a complete non-physical vibrational history of every single soul that has ever lived on this planet. So you can think of every experience, emotion, thought, every single thing you've ever gone through from the time your soul was created through all past lives up until the present, as well as future possibilities. And every single soul has an Akashic record. So it is non-physical and vibrational. That means it's not an actual like book in the sky or something that you can pick up and read. It's access through vibration and meditation. So, and a prayer. I use a prayer to open up the Akashic records. Every word we speak has a vibration attached to it. And so the prayer that I use is 
a prayer that the vibrations of the words actually allow you to access this dimension, which is the Akashic Records. And you can think about it as like a Google search for your soul because you can look up or you can ask information on anything. And the energies that I channel in the Akashic Records are the pinnacle. And the pinnacle revealed their name to me on March 13th of 2019, the day oh, that... Recently. Yeah. Yeah. So it was very recent. Um, the day that the internet broke, like Instagram wasn't working, oh, yeah, Facebook wasn't that. working. I believe a portal opened that day and that's why nothing was working. Um, all day long, I had an intense headache and I was hearing you need to come in the records. We want to be called something new. You need to come in the records. We want to be called something new. And it just kept, it was like replaying in my mind, like feeling that vibration. So when I put my daughter down to sleep that night, I went into the Akashic Records and I asked them, so what do you want to be called? And they said, the pinnacle. Up until that point, I was calling them the masters, teachers, and loved ones because that's how I had learned what I had learned to call them through Dr. Linda Howe's book, which is how I learned about the Akashic Records. But it never felt right or fitting to me because from the moment I started my readings, angels were coming through. I was communicating with spirit guides, with spirit animals, with the Pleiadians like yourself, like um, starseeds from Orion, the constellation Orion come through a lot. And It always felt very limiting to me to just say the masters, teachers, and loved ones because I knew I was getting guidance from so many more beings. And so that day they shared with me, we are the pinnacle. And they said, you can call us anything you want, but we are the pinnacle, the highest point. Um, We work with you in the records and we are the pinnacle. And so from that point on, I started calling them the pinnacle. And my readings have gotten so much clearer. They, I'm able to access information from different dimensions. I can see where souls come from, like the planets where souls come from. Wow. Um, it's unbelievable. So they also told me the pinnacle is symbolizing this next wave of consciousness that we're entering. Like our consciousness is expanding rapidly as you feel and I feel and so many listeners of your show feel as a collective we're expanding and so this is their way to communicate to me and to those who read the Akashic Records you can use the word the pinnacle and your readings and practice will expand as well. I love that to think about it as the highest point that is what a pinnacle is when you really think about it. Yeah. That is very interesting. Yeah. So how did the Akashic Records come into your life? You mentioned the book, but were you drawn to the book? What were you doing before you were doing this? Yeah. This is now totally (laughs) your full-time job. This is your calling Yeah. for now. I feel like we're always evolving, but this definitely seems like your calling. Yeah. It's been such a journey to get to this place. I was bouncing around from job to job, not knowing what to do with my life, not knowing where I fit, where I belong. And I feel like a lot of people can resonate with that and know what that feels like. Um, But I always felt, and this took me a long time to be able to be okay with saying as well, that I always felt like I was put on the planet to do something big, like that I was, I incarnated into this life to really leave a mark and to do something big. And through all of my jobs and everything that I was doing and being, I always felt, okay, this isn't it. I just haven't found it yet. And for a long time, I felt very full of myself for something to even have that deep within me. But that was my soul like telling me, you're, you're meant to do something big. And I started food blogging. Um, And that started from the first time that I really heard the pinnacle energy. I grew up as a psychic child. So I was receiving messages and having communicative dreams and even astral traveling as a child and like communicating with deceased family members. But when we were in uh, living in Toronto, we had a house fire and I got burned in my body, um, like a grease fire. I was running with a, a pot of boiling hot oil and it spilt down my legs and my 
feet and the flames got in my face and I was, oh my gosh. yeah, because our kitchen was in flames and I was trying to get rid of the fire and I was just like, I don't know what to do. It was one of those like fight or flight moments. So yeah. I was running with the pot through our apartment to like throw it outside in the snow and I got burnt through the process. And in the ambulance on the way to the hospital that night, I heard, don't take any medicine. Don't do anything here. You can heal yourself through eating plants, juicing, and rest. So don't take medicine. And I'm not at all against medicine or anything, but I just heard that. And so I got to the hospital and I refused any medication. And like they were trying to give me morphine and they wanted to do surgery on me and all this. And I was like, no, I'm not doing any of it. And I followed the direction that I was given, which I just thought was, I didn't know what that was. I just had a confidence of, of what to do. And within five weeks, I was completely better. I ran a marathon, a half, wow. like a 5K marathon, mm-hmm. which I don't know what that is in miles, but my body made a miraculous recovery. And I don't have any of the like scars on my legs or anything. No, you don't. no. And those were gone within a couple of months. And so I started food blogging and thought, this is the thing I meant to do. Totally. Plants, 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 plants. plants. And it was really great, but it wasn't fulfilling my soul need. As in, it felt like work still, and it felt like ego driven. Like I had to build something based on other people approving me, and it just wasn't the thing. Totally. And then um, I got pregnant, and I told my employers at the time I was doing social media marketing for this women's um, organization. This is very ironic, but I told them I was pregnant, and they decided to not f- uh, renew my contract. So after I had my baby, I wouldn't have a job anymore. And it was very difficult for me because I was about to have a newborn and no job to go back to, but it right. ended up being the biggest blessing. And it was during that time that I learned how to really surrender and to surrender to myself, knowing that I didn't want to take photos of food anymore and I didn't want to food blog anymore. It was like such a huge turning point. And I think it was because I was carrying my baby and going through this massive transformation and a spiritual awakening, reawakening as well. And so just surrendered. Like I was going through major postpartum anxiety and depression and I didn't really have anything to turn to except my own faith, I guess, and connection to my spiritual development that was happening. And I was getting messages from spirit guides and I was getting messages from my grandma. And like, I really believe that it was during the time that my daughter was so little and not sleeping very well, I would wake up in the middle of the night and to go and take care of her. And I'd be in that theta state and I would sit in her chair nursing her and I'd be just getting so many downloads. And it was like that sleep deprivation was so important for me to get so much of this information and this like activation through me. Um, And I'm grateful for it. And through that, I heard to start a podcast. And so I did because it just felt like a a nice next step. Like at the time I was like, well, I don't want to blog and take photos of food anymore, but I guess I'll podcast like that, that. Sure. I'll do that. And it worked out beautifully because my husband has over a decade of audio engineering experience. Wow. So he just like, like it was a perfect fit. He produces the show. What a nice fit. Yeah. And then the show was going to be about vegan living and wellness. And it just didn't feel right either. And so I still remember it on um, one evening in December before the show launched, I was washing dishes And I heard in my own inner knowing, and now I know from the pinnacle as well, they were reminding me that in 2012, I saw a psychic and she told me that I was going to have a large audience to talk about my spiritual gifts with and to share them. And at the time, I kind of laughed, didn't laugh her off, but I was like, I'm not doing that. Everyone's going to know. And then they're going to think I'm weird and I'm not doing that. No. But it came through like perfectly clear that night and I knew that it was the podcast. And so I changed direction. I didn't know what I, like the guests that I was going to have. I didn't know what it was going to look like. I launched it anyway. And the second episode, I like just share everything Mm. of what I'd been going through my whole life that I never, ever told anybody. 
And then um, one of the guests I had on my show was my old editor from The Body Book. Like I, I wrote for Cameron oh, Diaz's nice. website for a couple of years. I, th- I don't know if you've ever... I th- were you ever on that website too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know Amanda. Amanda. She's it was Amanda. So sweet. So that's who you're talking about. Okay, yeah. cool. So I talked to Amanda and I was like, who should I have on my show? Like, you know, a Everyone. lot of people, who should I have on my show? And she mentioned this woman named Morgan Yakis, who's also in LA. She's a hypnotherapist here. And she's like, she's really good. You should have her on your show. So I reached out and we had a phone call and it ended up her like, the call was like her asking me a lot of questions about myself, which I now know she's just really curious about other people's spiritual journeys and wanted to know about me too. And then she said to me, she's like, you need the Akashic records. Like, I really feel like you can read them and I feel like they'll change your life. And I just, I really think that you really need to read them. And I don't know if those were her actual words, but I do remember her saying, you need the records. And I was like, I don't know what that is, but sure. So she gave me the name of that book, Linda Howe's book that I told you about too. I tell everyone about it. (laughs) Yeah, it's amazing. And I went out that day and bought the book. I only read half of it, but through reading it, I really felt like I was reconnecting back to a part of myself that I never knew, but it made perfect sense. And then one day I decided to, like, I just felt the calling that it was time to go into the records. I went upstairs. My daughter was having a nap. And I said the prayer. I kept my eyes open. I channeled with my eyes closed, but I kept my eyes open. And I looked at the wall and said the prayer. And I, I always say that the like two most important moments in my life so far were having like giving birth to my daughter and going in the records the first time. It was like lightning through my body, but more than lightning because it was warm and refreshing and it was like I was stepping into a home that had always been there for me. And it, it was amazing. And my practice evolved so quickly. I launched it on June the 1st of 2018. So just barely a year ago. Mm-hmm. And I've since read the records for over 500 people around the world. Wow. I've, like I made a commitment with the pinnacle that if this is what I'm going to do, because they told me this is your life work, you're here to modernize the Akashic records. This is what you're here for. You've worked with them for so many other lifetimes. I've been in the physical, like usually a man working with them because women didn't usually work with them before. It was men in like higher religious type positions that worked with the records. But I've been in the physical working with them and then also in the non-physical, like as a teacher working with them. And so they said in this lifetime, you've incarnated to modernize them to like put the records on the planet again, modernize them, make them accessible to people, make people know about them. And so over the past year, I've been reading for a lot of people, over 500. We've put out workshops that have been channeled from the Akashic Records on how to return to your soul, how to find your soul purpose, how to realign with yourself, um, self-worth, self-love, like really becoming the person that your soul chose to be. It's our workshop called Return to Yourself. And then just recently, um, they channeled through to me that I have to teach people how to read the records. And I was so resistant to that. And I realized that it was because I didn't feel worthy of it. Like I felt like I wasn't ready or I'd only been reading for a year. So it's like, I'm not, I'm not ready for this. But then I stepped out of the way and realized I was being selfish in myself, like not allowing this to come through. And so um, at the end of May, we released a course on how to read the Akashic Records with the pinnacle, the way that I do it, which is different than the way that is done in the book. I only read half the book because I felt like I was trying to mold myself into someone else's teaching Mm, and it felt very limiting to me. So yeah, that's what we've done over the We, as in myself and my husband and our team, we've done Mm -hmm. over the past year. It's completely crazy. And I just really think that anyone who feels called to the Akashic Records should definitely check them out because they're this infinite resource of information on yourself and your soul purpose and path Mm -hmm. that you can have forever. So do they go into the past and the future? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Yeah. I had an experience this weekend in my ayahuasca ceremony where I stepped into like an actual Akashic Records book of mine. And it was a 
specific book about me and this one friend of mine, Claire, one of my, I need to tell her this, one of my best friends from college. And it was our, all of our life histories together. Wow. And that was just one book. And then I was trying to focus my mind to dive into all the other books of all the other relationships in my life. But my mind was all over the place and I wasn't really able to focus. So I only saw that one. But I saw that she and I have like so many lifetimes together in so many eras and so many countries. And yeah. we studied abroad together in this life. And I see now like in this life, us frolicking around Florence and Rome and Germany. We've done that for for eons. And it's so cool. It so is. I, but beyond that, I see your story. I resonate with your story so much beginning as a food blogger and it's so important to share healthy food with the world. It's, Mm -hmm. it's so great. And I do feel that that's many people's calling, Mm -hmm. but I, I felt the same as you where at some point, many points as I've gone back to it and dipped in and out of it, my soul felt a deep calling for something different than food. And some people are totally here to share food and transform people into living a healthy lifestyle. And then some people have a much different calling in a spiritual sense. And there's something that we have so many past life histories with doing, like you with the Akashic Records and that's so cool. So yeah. how do you feel like your life has been enhanced since this work has integrated into your life for the last year? Oh my gosh. I am a different person. But I'm the same person. I'm just the person that I want to be, you know? Like I've stripped away all of the I don't want to say the ego sense because I do believe that we can use our ego to work with us or work against us. But when I was doing food blogging, it was I was I felt competitive. I felt like just not a version of myself that I wanted to be. So I personally inside feel very connected to myself, very at peace, very humble and like I'm completely open to growth. I've said that I'm addicted to self growth. I want to go to the depths of myself all the time. I want to, I'm not afraid of any of my shadows and that's not the case of before. Um, This has shown me that we are all loving, neutral, energetic beings and that anything that happens to us is a lesson. Anything, like every experience is a lesson in our evolvement. And so, I'm grateful for that inner peace. My life has changed in many other ways in that my husband has left his job and we're like, we run this business together now. I didn't realize that. Yeah, he left back in March, um, which is amazing. So he does a lot of the back end stuff, a lot of the strategizing stuff, and he produces the podcast. And like for the courses, he did all of the copywriting and Mm -hmm. all of that kind of thing which we're going to be taking off his hands now because it's getting really busy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but it's so nice to have the freedom to really just be with our daughter and to work on our own schedule. And like so nice. we work when she's asleep and when she's awake, we play with her and do stuff as a family. So like that's how our life has really changed. We really feel freedom. And I mean, we're we're organizing our move here from Canada and that as well, I didn't ever think would have been possible for us. Like everything that I've always wanted now feels completely possible. I feel completely limitless in terms of how I can create and how I can live. But it also is coming from a place that's so pure that I don't even know how to take ownership of it. Mm -hmm. Because it, like, as you know, when it's channeling through you, I feel so neutral to it. Like none of it defines my self-worth. If I put something out and it does very, very well, and all of a sudden there's all this money coming in, I feel very grateful, obviously, but it's not like I'm like, oh, I did a good job. Like I, before I would have felt that. I'm right. so at peace with everything that it feels just so 
I don't take ownership of it, you know? Like yeah, I my do. self-worth comes from a much different place. And such a good feeling. It's such a good feeling. That's the biggest way my life has changed, but I also believe that had to change for all of this to flow. So let me tell you about the skincare that is rocking my world lately, Osea Malibu. You've probably seen me posting about it on Instagram and Instagram stories because when I become obsessed with something, I become really obsessed. You guys know this. I've been using their argon oil on my face constantly just to combat dryness and redness and all the different things that my face likes to do when it gets inflamed. It's so natural, completely from the earth. And before I get into all the details about the brand, I want you to know that you can use the code BLONDE at checkout, B-L-O-N-D-E, at oseamalibu.com, which is in the show notes. So if you're wondering how to get to their website, just click on oseamalibu.com in the show notes, O-S-E-A, malibu.com. And use that code BLONDE. That will get you a free travel size of anything you want on their website when you're purchasing $40 or more worth of product. So you have to remember to add the travel size into your cart in order for the code to be applied. I got some questions about that last week, so I wanted to make it a little bit more clear this week. Add the travel size item to your cart, whether it be the travel size argon oil, which is incredible, their Vegas nerve oil, which works well for calming. I've been using that every night. You put it behind your ears and on your neck and it just calms down the nervous system using an essential blend of plant-based oils. So, so many incredible travel size options you can add to your cart. Every product, with Osea is sustainably sourced, sustainably packaged, non-toxic, cruelty-free, vegan, and made with love right here in California. Their packaging is super cute, which you've probably noticed if you've seen it on my Instagram or anyone's Instagram. I love how California, their whole brand feels. They are a nutrient and mineral rich brand using bioavailable products in their base, which easily absorb into the skin and effectively target multiple skin concerns. You know, I've suffered from acne, from hives, from rosacea, from, oh my God, oily skin, dry skin, you name it, so many different things. And this brand works with my sensitive skin. They put your health and the health of our planet first with their potent skincare solutions that are pure, safe, and effective. So check them out at oseamalibu.com. Use that code BLONDE, add the travel size into your cart. And they have so many, so many good products like their ocean mud. They have masks for your face. I love their different masks. Cleansers, you can take a skincare quiz on their site. If you want to bring a little bit more of the Malibu high vibrational ocean living into your life, check out this brand. Use the code BLONDE. You can't go wrong. Oh my God, I could talk about all their products. So good thing. I'm going to talk about them again in two weeks so I can share more. Ocmalibu.com, code BLONDE. Now let's head back into this episode with Ashley. Right before you got here, I was listening to... The Goop podcast with Elizabeth Gilbert. Me too. Oh my gosh, how funny. I was also there listening to her in person, but I got a lot more out of it listening. Well, amazing in person, got a new nugget of wisdom listening to the podcast this morning. And she said exactly what you're just saying, which was like, when we're in communication with something greater than us, Mm -hmm. with the greater force of creation, then it doesn't really rest on our shoulders, the good and the bad. And then Mm -hmm. our self-worth is not defined by what we're creating. Yeah. It's, it's so, it gives me so much peace. (laughs) Me too. So much peace. And it's really expansive to see you living this life. And I feel like I'm just now stepping into what you're saying, like this limitless feeling, Mm -hmm. this feeling of just infinite calm the ego goes away and 
I think part of that too is developing rituals to live by in a daily sense. So what are your daily rituals? I don't really have any, which might sound kind of crazy, but I feel that I just have to live how I want to live. And what I learned about myself before we came on this trip is that I don't do well with a routine. Mm. I love routines, but I can't force myself into something. So I was making myself, not making myself, I was very inspired to do it to the point where I wasn't inspired to do Kundalini every day because I learned through the medical medium that some stuff in my belly is a little bit off. And I thought that through doing Breath of Fire and some Kundalini stuff along with celery juice and all this, like it would put it all back together. And I really enjoyed doing it every day until it felt like I was forcing myself to do something. And as soon as something feels like it's routine that I've like told myself I have to do, and then if I'm not doing it, I'm failing. That's like, I I get into that kind of mode. So I don't really have a ritual that I do every single day other than when I wake up in the morning, I drink a liter of water that I definitely do. I take certain vitamins, trace minerals. I just barely started taking. It feels really good. Um, I fast. That's been massive for me in terms of clearing. There is something to be said about food and spirituality. I believe keeping a clear channel through your body is so important and like eating as close to the earth as possible and minimally processed and, you know, like plants, plants, plants. But I also find that the patterns of eating are important for me. So I fast for between 12 to 14, sometimes even up to 16 hours a day, like after dinner all the way till 10 or 11 in the morning sometimes, um, just depending on how I feel. But that's been really big for me in terms of expansion, like just allowing my body to not work so hard, like in the like physically work so hard on right. digestion. So that's huge. Like that's a ritual that I'm currently really committed to because it feels really good. My daughter and I have a salt bath every night, which that's is so really nice. nice. She puts the salts and the oils in and we do it together every night. I really like connecting with her in that, but I also, she's a very sensitive child. She's like, uh, she has a lot of fears and she picks up on everyone's energy and she feels it like if a child beside her is crying, she just bursts into tears and needs to leave. And so I feel good as a mother making sure that like her energy is neutralized at the end of the day with the salts and the oils. And through the day, I just do what I can to remain present while also having an incredibly active mind where I feel like my mind is in 10 places at once. And I used to think that was a problem, but now I embrace it in knowing that it's how I receive messages and how I download and how I channel and I just welcome it. But that's really it. Like I don't drink any alcohol. I've been completely sober for, or like I didn't just not touching alcohol for about three and a half years now, but I don't really have rituals, like just those lifestyle things, mm-hmm. you know, like things that I can commit to for the long term is what I, what I keep in my daily routine. Yeah. I think your life is your ritual. So yeah. you don't have to have specific things that you have to do every day. And I'm quite similar in the sense of mm-hmm. when I tell myself I have to do something every day and I did the same with Kundalini and many other things. And I love these things and it's positive to remind myself to incorporate them into my life, but I have never been one for rules or structure. Me neither. So I can definitely relate to that in many ways. Mm-hmm. So, and then you read for people every day or... No. I mean, just because I'm trying, I'm like deducing the numbers. You said 500 people. It's been a year. So sometimes multiple a day and then days off. I was doing up to four, sometimes five a day for a while, three times a week. And that got to be way too much. So then I went down to nine readings a week, three days a week, um, doing three each day. And that got to be too much because I was, I have been receiving other invitations to do different projects that requires my channeling, like putting out this course of how Mm -hmm. to read the records and like different, different offerings um, 
the biggest message I got at the beginning of the year was you need to go from me to we. Like you can't do the, the pinnacle set yes. to me. Like not just the one-on-one. You have to reach more people. So like group channeling, creating different opportunities for people how to like to how to learn how to do this themselves like different different things and different projects have been coming in so i put out new appointments on june 1st that i've really scaled back to just five readings a week only two days a week um, for the summer those are booked now until september so come september when i release new appointments and hours we'll see what fits but i also find that the deeper i get into this work the more sensitive i am to sound to crowds to traffic to my environment to yes. people but also doing readings back to back exhausts me as well like it really energetically drains me so in order to make sure i'm doing a really good job and like to do really good work I have scaled back quite a bit. I get that. Totally. Yeah. I'm glad you're finding what works for you and having some energetic boundaries. Yeah. And what are your energetic energetic boundaries outside of scaling back? Like after you read someone, do you do anything specific? Yes. yes. So I do have rituals in that way. And I learned this through not having rituals because I didn't I didn't learn that in the book that I had to do certain things to protect my energy. Um, a friend of mine, a soul sister of mine, a psychic as well, Natalie Miles, taught me a lot about what to do. But one day I had a Marma treatment done, which is an Ayurvedic, a very Ayur, uh, ancient Ayurvedic treatment done by my healer, Purnima. And she moves the energy in your body in the different, the Marmas apparently are like, there. we have thousands of them, I think. They're just different energetic points in the body. And this was in the middle of winter in Canada. So it was like really cold and I get heartbroken every winter, like really heartbroken in, in the depths of winter. Mm-hmm. And um, she did my marma and she was like, you're heartbroken. Like your, your energy is really low right now. And I felt it. And going home, I was like sobbing. I got in a car accident. Like it was just intense, but I got Gosh. in a car accident at 111 and it felt like the, the, actual like hit of the car at that time 111 was like resetting me like Mm -hmm, it it was such mm -hmm. an aligned beautiful and difficult moment all at the same time but anyway I was sobbing and like hysterical and my husband was at work that day and I called him and I was like I need you to come home I can't take care of our daughter by myself like I need you to come home I just feel cracked open And so he did. And the next day I had an appointment and I didn't even think to cancel the appointment, but I went into it. And this was before I had any rituals or protection or anything. And I actually go into this in depth in our course of what to do, how to protect your energy. But I went into the appointment and I was feeling really low and and broken open, but I did the reading anyway. And midpoint of the reading, my daughter, who's again, I've said very sensitive, she came up to the door, like I was in our our room and I had the door closed and she came up and she was sobbing and banging on it and calling mommy, stop, stop, mommy, stop. And I was like, I have to stop this reading. Like I can't keep going. Like she's hysterical. So I stopped and I apologized to my client who was in Indonesia and I was in Canada. And I said, I'm so sorry. Can we, can we do this tomorrow? Like I have to go and take care of her. And that was fine. And then I just went and like, ended the call and went and picked her up and took care of her. And that night she got really sick. She got a really bad fever. And then I caught a bad fever. And then the next day when I did the rest of the appointment, that woman had a, like my client had a really bad fever. And she told me she was in the hospital with dengue fever. And I called my healer and I was like, what, what, I don't know how to make sense of this. And she's like, you caught her energy. Like you caught her illness because you weren't, you're, you were so open and my daughter felt it. And we all three had a fever. Mm. And my daughter and I were sick for two weeks and we never get sick. Oh my like God. never. She's almost three and she's never been to the doctor for an illness. She's never been on medication. Like she's she's so healthy, vegan from birth. <laughs> yeah. So healthy. Um, and we were sick for two weeks. And so after that, I realized I needed to put in some kind of ritual in place. So basically I just cleansed the space before. With? With this, yeah, spray that I used before um, we started, 
I usually burn, I, or not usually, but I like to burn like incense or Palo Santo, but I don't know about your little huddy, but my cats hate it. Like they oh, hate the yeah. smell. Oh yeah, Hudson gets weird about it and Jonathan doesn't like it either. Yeah. I love it. I could live I love it too. in Palo Santo and Sage all the time. Yeah. But yeah, Hudson will walk in and start blinking his eyes really hard. Yeah. And yeah. It's Sometimes hard it's, for them. It's worth it. Yeah. So yeah, I do it sometimes, but otherwise I just use a spray to like cleanse the mm-hmm. space. I hold certain crystals, like I hold a, a selenite all the time mm, to just good. keep the, keep it clean and clear. And this I have in this crystal, there's a spirit that lives in this one. I call it my coworker because I always hold this crystal when I'm doing any of this work. It's like with me at all times. Uh, I do a grounding meditation before going into the records with all my clients that just protects and and grounds. And then afterwards, I wash my hands every time. Mm, I've recently, someone just told me about that last week. Yeah. See, this is all new to me. Yeah, I wash my hands to protect. Um, If it feels very intense, I'll like actually brush the energy off my body, like with my hands. And that's basically, and then I cleanse, clear the space again with the with the spray. I go through a lot of the spray, yeah. um, but that's basically all I do. And then I have the salt bath every single night with my daughter, which just means we bathe together every night. But especially if I've done a lot of readings, I make sure to mm-hmm. dump a lot of salt in there. And that's so good. And do that. These are these tips are really helping me personally, and I'm yeah. sure a lot of people listening. I recently have been channeling more and allowing this into my life, channeling the Pleiadians and anyone else who wants to come through and just waking back up to my soul and have done some group channelings on Instagram. And oh my gosh, it's so silly as humans, we think we're invincible or something, or at least I did. And I opened myself so wide the way that you're talking about that I felt like I had been assaulted by energy and mm-hmm. was awake all night and so upset. And Jonathan was reminding me, you're just learning. You'll never do that again in the same way. So just allow yourself to learn from the experience. And we do have to be easy on ourselves. But these tips that you've shared are super helpful, mm-hmm. super helpful. And when you're doing those IG lives, like you have to think too of you're holding energy all of a sudden for every single person who's tuning in in the moment, but also over the next 24 hours. Exactly. Like you're holding energy for all of those people. And that can be really intense. And I find when I do group channeling to like live, I feel, I did, I taught at Rama when I first got here on this trip, which we were talking about. And there were only, I think, 40 people there. But I felt like high when I left. Mm-hmm. Like it's a high that I can't describe. And then it immediately followed by the biggest crash. I was so tired that I need. I went to bed at nine that night, and I like I, I we went right to Whole Foods and I got chocolate because I was just like I got chocolate and a juice because I needed the like the, yes, the energy yes. from the juice, but also the like endorphin Comfort. from the mm-hmm. chocolate. Like I needed that. But I also feel, and this channeled through me when we first got here, but the more that we call in manifestations into our life and like the bigger we expand and the more that things that we're manifesting are coming into our lives, they said the door, the pinnacle said the doors that you walk through, like the the opportunities you you open yourself to and the things that you're calling in, the doors you walk through to get those become heavier and heavier because you're pushing through more and more energy. You're holding more and more energy. Things can get bigger and bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden that pressure is on you. Like you're really holding the energy of so many people and of so much just opportunity of expansion and it can feel heavy. And so having those boundaries up and having those just rituals and like doing the IG live, having like a good meditation and then a salt bath after Mm -hmm. and like, like just coming down and allowing yourself time. Like I stop doing readings every night at 7 p.m. our time so that I can go to bed at 11. Mm -hmm. I did a reading once like 
an hour before I went to bed, it took me like four hours to fall asleep because I was just like energetically. That was right. when I first started doing readings and a friend came over and I was like, oh, I'll do a reading for you. Right. Like right before um, she left, it was actually my birthday last year and I couldn't sleep. And then I had anxiety and like, it was just crazy. So it's learning those boundaries for yourself. Yes. And I think they're personal for everybody too. Totally. Yeah. It's helpful for me to hear because I had yeah. so much anxiety yeah. and I guess that is all part of the process. Yeah. So you were holding the space. Yeah. Like you were holding it and you felt it. And yeah. you probably cracked open a portal within yourself that now you can hold more. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you don't go out and run a marathon on your first day. Like you train for it. Totally. But as soon as you train, you're like, okay, that all of a sudden that distance becomes easier. And then that distance becomes easier. And then the next, totally. and the next, and all of a sudden you can do a lot more because your body is capable of a lot more. It's just like you can hold energy a lot easier. Did you guys catch wind of the fact that I am creating and releasing a product with the amazing Silver Fern? Silver Fern brand has been a huge supporter of the Balanced Blonde since the very beginning. They are a brand of probiotics, digestive enzymes, protein powders, fiber supplements, um, natural prebiotic sweeteners, kids chewable probiotics, and so much more and soon to be our product together. If you want to learn more about the brand, listen to episode 106 of this podcast with the beautiful Charity Lighten. She is the co-founder, CEO, and chief nutritionist of Silver Fern. She talks all about the importance of probiotics, digestive enzymes, taking care of our gut, and so much more. In that episode that we did together, um, people always ask me, what are probiotics good for? Well, they're good for your gut health. They are also good for IBS, Crohn's, colitis, and candida, for bloating, constipation, and diarrhea, for metabolism and weight loss, for mood, anxiety, and depression, for sugar and hunger cravings, immune health, and so much more. We get deeply into that in the episode with Charity, and we also talk a lot about why Silver Fern works and survives once it hits the gut, which is kind of, you can't say that for all different probiotic brands on the market. A lot of them don't actually survive once they hit the gut. They've been scientifically tested and proven to do just that. Also, their plant-based protein powders are incredible. They have probiotics built into them. They are gluten-free, non-GMO, sustainably sourced, organic, all the things that are extremely important to make anything TBB approved. I love their chocolate plant-based protein powder and also the vanilla. And soon, stay tuned for the product that we're developing together that we'll be able to announce super soon. So use the code BLONDE at checkout to get 15% off of your Silver Fern products. Shop on silverfernbrand.com. Use the code BLONDE, B-L-O-N-D-E, and enjoy. Now back into this episode with Ashley. So can we do some live channeling now? Yes. So I'm going to lead us through a meditation, just a short one, because I feel you and I both need to ground. (laughs) Yeah, we are a little all over the place. So everyone listening, just so you know, this is great to have friends on the podcast because you can answer your doorbell when it rings and we can make phone calls to our housekeepers. And now it's time to ground and really dive into this very, very special practice. Yes. So we'll do a meditation. And then after that, I'll say the opening prayer. And that's what opens the Akashic Records. Because I channel with my eyes closed, I just trust you can like keep watch of the time and keep watch mm-hmm, of everything exactly. and just let me know when we'll stop. And that's about it. Like I've done a reading for you before. So mm-hmm. you know you know what to expect. Mm-hmm. So you can just take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And close your eyes. Imagine that fresh oxygen running through your bodies, creating new space, allowing you to feel lighter, 
When those exhales are melting away any stress or tension or worry that you have in your body from the day or the week or the month, you're just letting all of that go. And imagine that space in between your eyebrows getting softer and smoother with each exhale. Your jaw is getting softer and your shoulders are sinking down. Your tailbone is getting heavier and your feet are melting into the floor. And then imagine that there are two cords that are attached to the soles of your feet and those cords run down through the ground, the layers of the earth all the way down to the center of the planet. And at the center of the planet, there is a ball of energy, and that energy is life force energy, and it unifies all of us on the planet with love. That energy travels up through those cords and enters into our bodies at the soles of the feet. Continues to rise up your legs, over your kneecap up your thighs and into your hips, into your belly and through your ribs, just grounding you in this moment and connecting you to Mother Earth. And as that energy continues to move through your body, turn your attention to the crown of your head and imagine that the crown of your head is receiving a cosmic energy from the universe. It's pouring down your body, around your body, and through your body like water, illuminating you with unconditional love and unconditional light. Feel that energy as it pours down your face, down your neck, over your shoulders, down your arms, into your hands, down your chest, and into your belly. And as that energy continues to move through your body, it meets with that grounding Earth Mother energy. Your vibration raises, your heart bursts open as we access the Akashic Records. And so we do acknowledge the forces of light, asking for guidance, direction, and courage to know the truth as it is revealed for our highest good and the highest good of everyone connected to us. O Holy Spirit of God, protect me from all forms of self-centeredness and direct my attention to the work at hand. Help me to know Jordan Younger in the light of the Akashic Records, to see Jordan Younger through the eyes of the Lords of the Records, and enable me to share the wisdom and compassion that the Masters, Teachers, and Loved Ones of Jordan Younger have for her. Help me to know Jordan Younger in the light of the Akashic Records, to see Jordan Younger through the eyes of the Lords of the Records, and enable me to share the wisdom and compassion that the Masters, Teachers, and Loved Ones of Jordan Younger have for her. The records are now open. So that it's so interesting because they're showing me, Jordan, that you're sitting here right now and they're showing me this massive hawk feather, like the, like the feather of the bird, like mm-hmm. a hawk. Um, and it's just like, it's fanning you. It's waving over you. And they're saying, Jordan, you're um, undergoing this massive change in your body as if the energy in your body, like the, the, if you could apply like physiology to the energy of your body, it's completely restructuring, reformatting. And this, this wave of this hawk feather over you is this wave of new energy coming into you. They're saying it's a very sacred energy and it's actually coming from a past life that you've had, um, as an indigenous woman in North America. I believe it's the States, but I'm not sure. And there's, or this indigenous woman coming through. Um, and it seems like it was a past life of yours, but she's holding this hawk feather and she's, um, moving this energy into you. And she's also, they're saying that this was, um, this has been part of your energy that has wanted to integrate into you for a long time. It's like, it's this code that is within you that is like missing the last piece and this hawk feather that is all surrounding you right now. It's like, there's one, two, three, four, um, five and six 
there, there are these feathers that are like waving you at right now and it's waving and it's waving and they're saying that it's happening all the time, like in this present moment. But as you walk through your day, like these feathers are just waving at you and they're bringing in this energy into you and you've called this in, you've called this into your space, you've called this into your heart and it's integrating this life that you've had as a medicine woman. But it's also, it's interesting because it's like this woman who is who is waving the feather is also you from a past life, but she's also a guide of yours right now. So it's like, it's like fragmented. It's part of you, but it's also you calling in your higher self guide coming through and is integrating this part of you that has wanted to be there, has wanted so badly to be there, but hasn't been there until this point. And it's like, you're ready to meet her again and you're ready to bring this part through. And it's, there's a lot of energy of like medicine medicine woman of of healer, but of healing yourself through healing others and healing others through healing yourself. And they keep saying like medicine woman, it's very ancient. And they keep showing all of these different indigenous practices, working with the earth, working close to the earth, working with um, energies of the earth, working with different plant medicines, which I know you do, but they're saying like really taking this as a sacred time, a sacred time to integrate and a sacred time to connect to the earth. It's like also mother Gaia energy is coming up, like mother earth energy coming up to heal you as well. And it's like, they're bringing you into the earth and there's actual roots in your feet. And it's like planting you into the earth, planting you into this place of security, this place of trust, this place of all knowing, because for so long you felt like untethered up, 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 up in the air, untethered up in the air where you're like floating around and you're having a really good time. They're like, imagine that you're like swimming through the air and you're like swimming and looking down and you're like, everything is beautiful. But at the same time up there, it can feel very lonely and it can feel a little bit scary when you feel so untethered. And so they're bringing you into this rooted place where they're planting you into the earth and other guy is like coming up and growing around you. And there's these like beautiful, um, these beautiful ferns like grow and like, and vines growing up all around you, all through your body. And this hawk feather energy is waving it all into you. And it's like, they're saying that you're feeling more grounded. You're feeling more connected, even though you're channeling. And even though this energy is coming through you, for the first time in your life and the first time in many lives, you're going to feel more grounded and connected to the earth and to the healing powers of the earth. And it's this, this moment they're saying of almost like this timeout moment in your life right now, like this timeout, this peace, this, this slowing down of connecting to the earth. And it's, it's, it's like regenerating you. And it's, 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 it's changing like the physiology of the energy through you. It's like opening you up in a different way. And, and, it's a massive amount of transformation right now. Is any of that resonating? All of it. All of it. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Do you have a question? I do. Um, so this weekend in the plant medicine ceremony that I did, I connected with the souls of my children and specifically a daughter of four. Oh my gosh. But a daughter who's she made it so clear that she's so ready to come through and I would love to hear more from her. It's so interesting because they just showed, I showed you four with my hand because they were like four, 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 oh my four. God. And there's just fours, Chills. numbers, fours everywhere. Chills. But she's been with you for four lives as well. So she's coming through. This is her, um, no, this is her fourth time coming through to you. Um, but yeah, you'll have four children. Um, and this is her fourth time coming in and she'll be your first. Like, it seems like she's going to come first. Um, and let's see if we can bring her forward through, cause they're just showing me information about her. Um, mm. she is so happy to be with you in this life because she's always wanted to live physically by the Pacific ocean. They're <laughs> saying Pacific, like Pacific um, near the Pacific Ocean is important for her and she'll want to be down by the water a lot. Um, and when you're near the water, when you feel, they're saying when you feel this, the spirit of the water and the wave and that like force, you're feeling that of her. Like oh my God. that's how she communicates with you. She's actually saying when you were, when, when the wave came up to you, that was her touching you oh um, my recently. Gosh. Like when a wave came up to her, you, that was her touching you. And a lot of her soul and her energy uh, lies within the water. And of course we can't talk, we can't open her records or anything, but this is all just coming through you and coming through the pinnacle that when you're going by the water, you're connecting with her and you can actually talk to her near the water. Um, She'll come through in a water birth, 
because she wants to be in water or like she's going to try to come through in a water birth. Um, but it's, her soul is very connected to water and this, this physical place that you're living in near the Pacific ocean. That's like, she really wants to come through in some way. Like they keep showing the coast and the ocean and her coming through in this way. Um, she's a water, a water being probably coming through in a, in a water sign. Mm. Um, yeah, they're saying that the, the lives you've had together are older. Like you haven't been connected for a while. Um, they've happened years and years ago. Um, they do show you cradling her. And this is when you are that indigenous woman and they show you cradling her in a tent and you're just like kind of rocking back and forth and cradling her. And you have um, red flowers around her neck. It almost feels Hawaiian um, mm. or like um, French Polynesian. Like it looks like it could be of that area because it looks very tropical and you're cradling her and you have these flowers around her neck and you're just like cooing her and speaking softly and sweetly to her. Um, they're saying she's a gentle force. Like she'll come through with energy that will completely transform your life as motherhood does, but she'll do this in a gentle way. Whereas when you're standing by the waves, it can feel very forceful coming up, but then it like gently graces your body. Like it, like the wave just touches your body and they're saying that's how her presence will feel for you. It'll feel like you're being uprooted like a wave up, like can move you, but it'll feel like you're being gently cradled and rocked. Um, but she's not really coming through with much else. They're just saying, yeah, they're saying importantly too that you'll have four children. Wow. Like the four. Do any of the other children want to reveal themselves? There's a boy as well, and he wants to come through with his brother. Like they're, mm-hmm. and a- again, this can mean that they're just showing a certain ways, but when they come through as energy, like energy is neutral, so they can be born a different sex or even identify with a right, different energy, right. but they're showing the mask, like the masculine side of two boys that want to come close together or two children that'll be born very close together, but they're showing as boys and they're showing that they have like shorter Brown hair mm-hmm. and they're holding hands and it, they could be twins um, or just very, very close together, but they're holding hands and they have a very strong bond together. And they're saying that they want to come through to you as their mother because you'll recognize their differences and celebrate them. Wow. I love that so much. Yeah. Do you have another question? Do the Pleiadians have anything to say? Let's see. They're saying, Jordan, you need to know that that you have some fear and hesitation of rooting of grounding of mm-hmm. like releasing that untethered yes. energy that's a, re- a resistance a fear and sometimes you back away from grounding because it feels so foreign to you and it feels like you're you're more comfortable when you're up above yes. when you literally feel up above <laughs> literally but they are saying that you do not need to fear grounding as part of your evolution um, your soul's journey and growth. And because your soul does originate as a star seed, you never, like, you'll never be fully planted into the earth. This is all just a part of knowing yourself deeper and sinking into this human experience in a new way that you haven't before. It's almost like what they showed was like a ceremony that you're like going through right now of sinking into this human experience in a different way, in a deeper way than what you have ever before. But you don't need to feel fear, losing the side of yourself of being connected. They're saying rooting gives you more connection because you can actually, they're saying it's tangible. Like you can, Mm -hmm. you can sort through almost like they're showing like all these files of like downloads you get and ideas and feeling like everything in your office, which is your, your mind, your subconscious is completely scattered. Grounding allows you to organize it, but not discard any of it. Like you, it's still all there. You're still receiving these messages. You're still receiving this mail. You're still connecting up to the Pleiadians because you are a Pleiadian. A Pleiadian. So you can't disconnect that part of yourself because that's where your energy is, is coming from. It's like in the cosmos, your energy is coming down through your body and then rooting into the earth. And it's right now just looking for that place to 
really ground in and, and root in, but you won't be disconnected. Like you yeah. can't cut that tether. So they're encouraging you to embrace this human experience, to embrace this, this incarnation where you want to root more into yourself. And they keep showing these indigenous women, um, these, these, these images, because they are women who are very connected to the earth, very connected to the spirituality of the earth. And they're saying you can gain just as much spirituality from a planet that is not your home as you can from a planet that is yours. Like you're landing on a foreign planet, but you can still create um, the same type of connection to this planet, which you're doing so right now through plant medicine, as you did before. They're saying it's just this like merging of your two worlds right now, and you don't need to fear um, grounding into the earth. So they're like giving mm. you that invitation. That is so perfect. Yeah. So um, timing wise, it's t- I think we should close, okay. although I could go on with you forever. I'd like to thank the masters, teachers, and loved ones for their love and compassion. I'd like to thank the lords of the Akashic Records for their point of view. And I'd like to thank the Holy Spirit of Light for all knowledge and healing. The records are now closed. Amen. The records are now closed. Amen. The records are now closed. Amen. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yes. Water. I cannot even tell you how accurate that was. Like, beginning with the hawk feather Mm -hmm. this weekend in the plant medicine ceremony. That's what they were like waving on all of us. And I felt just so connected. Like it was, she was Kristen from the ceremony. It was like um, blowing like Palo Santo on us with, with the hawk feather. And then literally my main teaching of the plant medicine ceremony this weekend was grounding my feet into the earth because it will help me connect with the ethers and will help me heal. And I was getting this shamanic body work during the plant medicine ceremony. And like the major message from the Pleiadians was like, ground your feet into the earth. And even for the last few days, I have resisted it in ways because ways that I'm not doing on purpose. It's just, it's not as natural to me. And being grounded is has not been who I am, but I recognize the extreme importance and medicine in the earth. Yeah. Wow. All of this is so cool. <laughs> You're so incredible. Truly very gifted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I saw you like, building a home like not actually I don't know if you'll build a home like if you and Jonathan, Jonathan will build a will. home <laughs> but yeah. I saw you like building a home and that home symbolizing like literally connecting to this place and like I saw it committing too, when you were talking yeah especially about the four kids yeah I can see our home it's either going to be up in like Mandeville Canyon which is really close yeah. to here or oh it was oh, I felt thought it was oh because yeah. I saw a lot of Bougainvillea flowers. Yeah. Like, I like really desert like desert vibes. I really like both. Wow. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. So tell everyone there where they can find you. Absolutely. Um, you can find me on Instagram at underscore Ashley Wood. And our website is ashleywood.life. And that's where we have all of our programs and our workshop on how to read the Akashic Records. And when there are free appointments, that's where you can book from. You can find our podcast at manifestthisshow.com or manifest this on iTunes and all the places. Um, And then also, if anyone listening is interested, we have a Facebook group called Manifest This Soul Circle. And it's I'm really not involved in it. I just created the space, but it's a place where people who are learning about their spirituality can go and where they can go and practice their own gifts. Like there are people who are just starting out with reading and offering for very reasonable prices, if not free and like doing trades and asking questions and cool. it's all happening in that place. It's a really supportive community of people around the world. So Great. check that out if you're interested. Thank you so much. This was incredible. Such a gift to have you here. Thank you so much for having me, Jordan. Yay. All right, guys, thank you for listening to this episode with Ashley, channeling the Akashic Records, talking all about my Akashic history. Ashley, this was such a treat. 
I can't even believe we got to get some info from my future children. Always an exciting moment. I can't wait to be a mom. You guys know this. Just so many incredible things. So thank you so much. Check out Ashley on her Instagram at underscore Ashley Wood. Check out her podcast, the Manifest This podcast. I will be on soon as long as scheduling applies um, to both of us very soon. And super exciting that my course is launching so soon. I cannot even tell you how happy I am about that, how thrilled I am to share it with you guys. There will be a whole solo episode all about the course launching next week. So you'll learn a lot more. But before that, you can head to my website, learn everything that you could possibly want to learn on thebalancebond.com under the course section. If it calls to you, I would be so honored to have you involved. This is the first course I've ever created, the first of its kind. And it's incredibly special, infused with more love than I can even possibly begin to describe. So I'm honored and thrilled to share it. And also join our Soul on Fire podcast tribe on Facebook. Rate and review and subscribe to the show. Send me a screenshot to Jordan at thebalancebond.com to receive a free copy of my Soul on Fire yoga ebook. And I can thank you personally and we can chat. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you to our incredible sponsors for Sigmatic, Osea Malibu, and Silver Fern Brand. You can use the code BLONDE at any of those places to get an amazing discount and just check out the show notes for all the details on those. Have an amazing Soul on Fire day. Thank you for being here and I love you. Mwah.